You're tuned into the COVID-19 Community Report here on KDRT-LP 95.7 FM in Davis, California. I'm Autumn Labbe Renault, and today is Tuesday, December 15th, 2020. We're sharing local news and resources focusing on what's impacting Davis and nearby cities in Yolo County during the COVID-19 pandemic. My guest today is Jesse Salinas, who serves as the Assessor, Clerk Recorder, Chief Election Official for Yolo County. And we'll get to that interview in just a few minutes. If you are listening live this week, you're doing so during KDRT's fall fundraiser. As this unusual year comes to an end, we are particularly grateful to all our listeners, supporters, participants, volunteers, and extended community. We've all rallied together to adjust to social distancing, and yet we've remained connected through our unique local programming, like this show. We invite you to tune in here throughout the week at KDRT 95.7 FM or stream via kdirt.org to enjoy some special holiday cheer that our DJs are happy to share with you today through December 21st. And as an extra special holiday treat, we're thrilled to be airing the 17th annual Home for the Holidays concert Thursday, December 17th at 7 p.m with an encore presentation on winter solstice, Monday, December 21st, also at 7 p.m. Find links and more at kdrt.org, and thank you. A reminder that as of December 10th, Yolo County is under the state's regional shelter-in-place order. Multiple industries are impacted due to this change. Again, you're going to want to see yolocounty.org for all the details there. But in a nutshell, don't go anywhere. You don't have to go. Don't see anyone. You don't have to see. Wear a mask, keep your distance, and wash your hands. This has actually been a really big week in COVID-related news. As of yesterday, we have 6,117 confirmed cases in Yolo County and a total death count of 89. But since Friday, Yolo County has reported 340 new cases of COVID-19. About 41 of those individuals are projected to require hospitalization within the next couple of weeks, and eight will likely require intensive care. And again, that's just from the last three days of test results in our county. On a hopeful front, yesterday, the first vaccines from Pfizer began rolling out across the nation from the pharmaceutical giant's Michigan headquarters. California was expected to receive approximately 325,000 initial doses. Yolo County will receive 975 doses that will be given to healthcare workers at our local hospitals, and then at our long-term care facilities, and then paramedics. No word yet on additional doses or when they will be available to community members, but it looks like we're looking at a late spring to early summer timeline there. Testing for the COVID-19 virus via Healthy Davis Together in December is available at the Davis Senior Center, 646A Street, and the Mondavi Center, 523 Mrack Hall Drive on the UC Davis campus. Uh, This is for asymptomatic individuals only, for anyone who lives or works in Davis, and for times, dates, and appointments, you can visit healthydavistogether.org slash testing. And if you still need a flu shot, you can get one this Thursday, December 17th from 4 to 7 p.m. at the Yolo County Office of Education, located at 1280 Santa Anita Court in Woodland. You can make a reservation by calling 530-312-5858, or you can walk in. This is not a drive through facility, and you must wear a face covering and physically distance. We're going to take a moment for music and we'll be right back with Jesse Salinas. All right, my guest today is Jesse Salinas, who serves as the Assessor, Clerk, Recorder, Chief Election Official for Yolo County, shortened to ACE. I last spoke with Jesse back at the end of September when he and his staff were ramping up for vote by mail. We're touching base today to talk about lessons learned during this time of COVID and what voting in Yolo County could look like moving forward. Thank you so much for joining me. Well, thank you, Autumn, for inviting me. So as your title indicates, Jesse, there's an awful lot under your purview, but it was really the election work that took center stage this year. 
So I, I know you presented to uh, the Board of Supervisors earlier today, kind of a, a wrap up of where you've been. Can you walk us through what had to really be a Herculean effort of managing an election during a pandemic? Think back, what was it like to have to, to get the news and have to shift to vote by mail? Well, thank you again, Adam, for the invitation today. And, and it was quite a shift. Uh, all I can say is that when we started looking at the traditional polling places and what we discovered from the March primary is that we had a bit of a crisis in terms of poll workers. Yeah. Uh, just to kind of give a little snapshot of what took place back then in March, it was the very beginning of the COVID outbreak and we were losing poll workers at an extraordinary rate on election day. And it was just the very tip of the announcement of COVID. So we knew we had to make a lot of changes and there were changes that were being discussed statewide uh, with the, the Secretary of State's office and registrars across the state of how we were gonna try to put this election together. So uh, I can give you a little insights on what that was like as we were going through this. And this was right after we certified the election and in that early part of April, we were starting discussions and it went through uh, really through the early part of summer but by the end of um, April, the early part of May, we were getting a pretty clear idea of what was gonna be happening regarding this uh, November election. And that was the implementation of um, a more of a voter uh, assistance centers as we call them here in Yolo County, but mm -hmm. the Voters' Choice Act as uh, Sacramento County and a few of the other counties had uh, talked about uh, and had implemented in the March primary. There were actually 15 of those that were doing that in the March primary. And it just reduced the number of polling places to be able to service um, on this uh, expected difficult November election. Now, when you say you were losing poll workers, that sounds like that was part of a, a trend statewide, not just Yolo County. And, and why was that? Well, a lot of the workers, uh, as you probably are familiar with, a lot of our poll workers that were traditional poll workers are folks who have uh, been retired and yeah. are coming back to help out as part of their volunteering and helping to make a difference in our society and, and democracy. And so a lot of them were at risk in terms of the categories that we were talking about in COVID early on. So what ended up happening is we had folks that, you know, th those who, who actually uh, stepped away uh, were those that were in that category, the at-risk category. I see. They were both the, the actual poll workers, but even our, our inspectors who are more seasoned veterans, I'll call them, that have been running elections for a number of years. They were also um, dropping out at a high rate. And those are the people we turn to really run our elections because at the uh, polling site, because they've had years of experience running elections yeah. at these locations. Got it. So... Yeah, the news came down from from the state and it became clear that we were going to shift to all vote by mail. And that's really a, a sea change. Of course, here in Yolo County, that option's been available, you know, for a number of years. I know my husband avails himself of that. And and all of a sudden it went to all of us uh, voting by mail. I can only imagine how many times you had to answer certain questions and how I know how concerned people were for things like tracking their ballot. Was my ballot received? Is it okay? So how how did your staff come together to to manage that transition? It had it had to be enormous, an enormous task. Yeah, it, it was a challenge. I mean, the, the benefit for Yolo County is, you know, in the past election in March, 70% of all of our, our voters were vote by mail. So the lift wasn't as big as perhaps some other states have had to deal with in this past election, but it still was a massive change in dealing with educating voters who had never actually experienced it, as you've talked, uh, as you shared here, that they, they they weren't confident. And of course, some of the some of the language that was coming out at even a national level about the uh, confidence and vote by mail uh, made our job more difficult because there were people that were doubting the integrity of the vote by mail process. So we did a lot of outreach, as you probably have seen, in terms of more press releases, more presentations, more radio interviews than uh, I'd ever done in my life, really, in the span of, of two to three months. And uh, just doing our best to get 
the media to understand the messaging and let the community know that it was a safe and secure process. And um, as much as we tried, there's still a few out there that still had doubts because of what was being proposed and shared at a national level. But I think by and large, people were starting to have confidence in what we were doing here in Yolo County. Yeah, and you have such transparency in your office too. I mean, I know that there's al there are always members of the public um, involved during the the counting. There's there's really quite a bit of transparency there. I guess I'm curious about since I mentioned the counting. So so how did that unfold? Because you had votes that were being counted on election night, but then there were votes that kept coming in for a while, and then there was this process where you certified the vote. Can you tell us what that means? Sure, I'm happy to walk you through that and to your listeners. So as you noticed on election night, uh, there is that first results is a large number. It's, it, it's a significant number of ballots that have come in through the vote by mail process that we can start processing, not counting, but processing before election night. Mm -hmm. uh, and then once election night happens and it's after eight o'clock and all the polls have closed, we can then upload and tally those results. And then whatever we pull in on election day, those results then get posted later on in the evening uh, as we go into the night. So those are the first phase and second phase. And then the third phase, as you're referring to, is what's called the canvas. And those are all the vote by mails that are dropped off at either a, a, um, a voter assistance center on election day. They're mailed to us. And in this election, this is one of the changes that was made as a result of uh, new legislation, both an executive order and legislation on the vote by mail process, is that ballots that came in through the mail could be received not just three days after the election, if postmarked on election day, but could come in up to 17 days later. Mm -hmm. uh, but they have to be postmarked on election day. So that process of allowing ballots to come in later, as long as they were meeting that election day deadline, got increased and pushed out the, the actual um, certification deadline for us, because we had to wait for that deadline to pass before or we can start doing our final processing of all those uh, vote by mail ballots. In addition on election day, and because keep in mind that one of the changes that took place with this new model is that individuals could come in, voters could come in on a Saturday, Sunday, Monday, and Tuesday. So they had three days even before election day right. to cast their ballots at one of our voter assistance centers. So anybody that actually came in and there were issues that they needed to resolve or they wanted to actually register and vote on the exact same day, they were given what's called a conditional or provisional type of ballot, depending on their uh, situation. And those ballots that are, were conditionally and or provisionally provided, we had to take care of and, and process as part of the canvas period, which means after election day, we have a period of time before we actually can certify and finalize the election. And that's known as the canvas period. Okay. So we had to go through all those processes. And, and again, we were transparent, as you probably saw. We sent out press releases and say it's yeah. open to the public. We had to adhere to social distancing requirements. But people were here pretty much every day uh, throughout the entire canvassing process, which we certified on December 1st, uh, watching, watching everything that we did in that process. Hmm. So, you know, not only did we have the shift to vote by mail and all the changes that, you know, as you've been describing, mm -hmm. and in, in the middle of a pandemic, we also had other significant shifts in Davis, for example, the shift to district elections. I can tell you from my work on local elections here, uh, we've never had to produce for a show programming for a city council election and a school board election at the same time. They're usually staggered. And, and so that switch was um, interesting from my perspective, and it made for a lot of candidates. So you had a lot of counting to do. <laughs> we did. We had a lot of counting, and it actually complicated matters quite a bit in Davis in particular, because you had, uh, for example, in the uh, school board race, you had a couple of district elections, and then you had one, which was still an at-large because it was filling a vacancy that had been created right. by the departure of one of the uh, persons that had served on the uh, school board. So you had a combination of two districts and an at-large to go along with a couple of district elections for the city council, plus right. you had some at-large elections with uh, the bond measures. So 
that there was there was quite a bit happening in the city of Davis, and yeah. it made for some. Actually, there were some folks that were pretty confused over wait, why is this candidate not on my ballot? Well, you're not in their district, and we had to right. try to explain that and uh, share that correct information because uh, there was some false information that was being passed by other media outlets that were sharing incorrect information, but we were hopefully able to correct that moving forward. Yeah, we did a total of 26 meet the candidate statements or campaign statements in the case of the local bond measures. And that was record setting uh, for us in a local election. The typical is more somewhere around 15, 16. So it was, uh, I, I thought of you a lot during that time because we were dealing, you know, with our, with our uh, portion of it here. Um, I guess while we're still talking about numbers, I am really curious what the final uh, voter turnout was like in, in Yolo County for this time. And was it, you know, relative to other elections, was it more, was it less, and was it what you expected? Um, well, I have to share with you, it was, it kind of, it was a huge number, more than we had expected, because given the, the COVID outbreak, we didn't know how the community was going to react to mm -hmm. uh, an all vote by mail or this voter assistance center model. Um, but it was, they were huge numbers. So to give you a context, and we went back and I, in anticipation of what the numbers might be, I took a look back at the last 30 years of presidential elections. And we're talking about the November presidential elections just for yeah. comparison. And there's a pretty consistent pattern that uh, for the most part, we've been around 76 I think one year it was, I think 2004, we were actually at 77% of registered voters that actually came and cast a ballot mm -hmm. in those elections. So my thought is we might actually broach, you know, break the 80% threshold. I was ambitious thinking we could do this, we could break 80%. And as it turns out, uh, we ended up with an 83% voter turnout of registered wow. voters, which is just a phenomenal number huge number. Um, I think when you look at it, again, out of 119,000 registered voters going in to election day, uh, we had 99,000 uh, cast ballots. I mean, that's, again, just a huge turnout. And what was powerful about the numbers is that uh, the vote by mail made up 93, almost 94%, but 93.73% of all of those that were cast. So a huge number of folks you know, voted by mail. And right. I will share with you the aspect of that was interesting. Again, only some 6,000, uh, a little over 6,000 actually voted in the voter assistance centers with a live ballot. The thing that we have found out that was a huge success is our drop boxes. Our drop boxes that we put throughout Yolo County. And I, I need to give you some context here. Um, we did do drop boxes in, in March. And what we did is we partnered with the libraries to put these drop boxes at, at selective libraries, uh, county libraries, and even at the city library here in Woodland because it's not part of the county library system. And we had uh, really a little over 1,300 people that dropped off their ballots in the uh, March uh, election. To give you a context of comparison, and it's, it is kind of mind boggling when you think of the numbers, um, for this election, this past November election, we had 51% of the, the 92,000, over half of them came in through the vote by mail drop boxes. And, you know, if you think about that, that's a, that's, that's a huge like number. Huge number, Jesse. Yeah. Huge, huge. But, you know, I have to tell you what, what we did differently too, which is significant is by law, we were required to have eight of them spread throughout the county because for every 15,000 registered voters. And when I was looking, when you talk about projections and how you're trying to set up for this election, I had shared with staff, my projections is that we might have a high of up to 120. 20,000. I thought that was a high watermark of registered voters that we would have, but I anticipated we'd end up anywhere from 117 to like 120, somewhere in that range. So when we ended up at 119, it was within the range of, of projections that, that we had laid out. And so knowing that, and if I looked at my calculations of how many um, 
voter assistance centers, which was for every 10,000 registered voters, you needed a, a voter assistance center. So that's why we put 12 out in the county. I was expecting if I went up to 120, I would have that completely covered, which we did. But the other element was the, the drop boxes. And that the way that legislation was written is for every 15,000 registered voters, you would need a drop box, which that equates to eight drop boxes throughout Yolo County. Mm -hmm. But we got aggressive here in Yolo County because I knew that would be a real, very helpful way, an easy way for people to drop off their ballots. Yeah. And um, and this is before the whole United Postal Service, you know, issue was had had reared its ugly head. So this decision was made back in in actual June, yeah. where I just got really aggressive and said we're going to put out twelve. So we did fifty percent above what what was uh, required. So we put out twelve of those boxes, and what we did is we also partnered with Nugget Market, mm -hmm. Rayleigh's. Uh, we put them, we put some 24 seven, we partnered with the, like the city of Davis. We had, we put a 24 seven box that was outside of the, um, the city hall. We also did that in, in uh, West Sacramento. And there was a, a box, a 24 seven box that we put outside of uh, our office here, but across the street over at the post office. And so people could just drive up, drop off their back, their, uh, ballot and drop it off in the drop box and keep going. As and a matter of fact, I, I dropped off my ballot at the Nugget Market on uh, uh, Covell Boulevard. And when I got there, someone was taking, they were doing a pickup of the ballots. And I was a little confused. And so I walked up and I asked her, can I drop my ballot off? And she she swung her hair out of the way, showed me her official vest and her badge. And she said, just to let you know, I'm an official representative and I can take it for you. I'm, I'm you know, I'm doing a pickup now. And she was great. It was I had absolute confidence dropping my ballot off. So that was wonderful. And that's what we heard. People loved the drop boxes and they yeah. felt it was secure. They, they could depend on it. But to think that of over 92,000, more than 50% of our voters dropped it off in those mail return drop boxes is huge. So we're going to continue that partnership and, and build upon it moving forward. So yeah, we, we struck gold with that. Yeah. One. Well, good for you for, you know, going above and beyond with the, the 12 drop off locations, especially when we were seeing the news come out of places like Pennsylvania, where there was one for a county that had four times the population as, as Yolo County. And also, you know, this too, Yolo County is a very large, very geographically and culturally diverse um, county. And so it makes sense to, if, if you're going to put that effort in to go a little bit further. So, so good on you for that, by the way. Um, Thank you. I think my, I'm really wondering what you think about the mail-in uh, vote by mail. Is that going to continue in future elections? Is there any going back after this, or is this, is this where we are now? It's, it's, that's a, a great follow-up question. In fact, I need to engage the legislature and because they need to be able to modify uh, the rules accordingly because the, uh, the vote centers that we had versus the, uh, voter, the uh, Voter's Choice Act is a little different. The Voter's Choice Act model required the, those centers to be open 11 days. Uh, and that's just there was a lot of wasted time and the yeah. data shows that. So we're hoping that they allow us to make it more of this model that we saw in November. And so we really want to be very aggressive in sharing that data points with the legislature. So they allow us that flexibility, but I, we've already heard that there's an interest in wanting vote by mail to be more of a permanent option uh, along with some of those in-person voting options. So I do think this is kind of the, where we're going as a state that we are going to have more vote by mail opportunities. And with some, I think there will always be some kind of um, in-person because there's some, there may be no language needs or other special needs you may have. So we're going to still have some in-person options, but, you know, given the success statewide of the vote by mail process, I think this is the, the wave of the future. This is what we're going to start seeing more and more of. And again, people have just said how convenient it was and how much they appreciated the, how safe and secure it was. Yeah. Yeah. You did a great job with that. We have just an, a minute or two left and, uh, so what's our next significant local election cycle? For example, when will the, the other half of the district elections take place? Well, you know, what's interesting is, you know, they will typically be scheduled on a two-year cycle. What we're finding out is that there are, there are some uh, likely some special elections that are coming around the corner. There was, uh, 
you know, there's there's some empty slots uh, that have taken place as a result of some vacancies on some of the city council races. So there are a couple of uh, cities uh, in Yolo County that are looking at potential having some special elections. So we're having some discussions with them on the timeline and how that would work. Uh, I would in, I would otherwise, if there's not a special election either in May um, or June, uh, it could be pushed back to November as a, as a what we call a, a UDEL, uh, which is, uh, I won't go into those details right now because that's a whole different discussion for another day. But um, it, we may have some things happen in, in this 2021, but typically we're in a two-year cycle in okay. our elections. So the, all those that you're referring to should be, except for those special elections, should be taking place again next um, and it'll be actually in 2022, it'll be in June. It will not be in March okay. because the legislature has changed the rules. The presidential will be in the March, but the other off election cycle will be in June. So it'll be June of 2022. All right. Well, thank you for that. I want to thank you for joining me today. I want to thank you and, and your staff and just, you know, give you accolades until the cows come home for the really heavy lift you did during this for keeping it open and safe and transparent and for working so hard to uh, help us get the vote out in Yolo County. So thanks again for joining me. Thank you, Autumn. Thank you. And thanks to my staff for all the great work in the community who stepped up and all the partners. It, it was really a, a community effort and we couldn't have done it without everyone's support. So thank you. All right, you have been listening to the COVID-19 Community Report here on KDRT 95.7 FM in Davis, California. Owing to the holiday break and a little servicing needed on the KDRT transmitter, I'm taking a brief hiatus and I will be back on January 5th. Thanks for tuning in and happy holidays.